All right, can anybody see me? Let me know. Make sure everything is working okay before we get started. All right. Happy Saturday to everybody. Just going to keep refreshing my comments over here and make sure. All right. Hello, hello. Oh, I see a couple people jumping on. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Let me know if you can hear me okay and you can see me okay. Everything is working. Just want to make sure before we get started. Awesome, awesome. Hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Make sure to write in the comments where you're watching from. We can all get to know each other before we start here. We'll let everybody hop on for a couple minutes before we get started with our project today. I'm going to be showing all about the new cello sheets and how I did my flower power cake behind me here. I'll show you a little bit more up close of how I get those cool cutouts. Hi guys! Hi Sheila! Hey Donna! Hey Donald! Joanne! Hi, hi, hi! Alright. Fantastic! How are you guys doing today? Hey Evelyn! Thank you! Great to see you. All right. Awesome. So yeah, we're going to be doing the um, flower power cake today. I'm going to be going all over how I made it, how I made the cutouts. Um, that's a really fun um, trend that I've seen more and more lately. So I wanted to show you guys how to create those really cool, clear, uh, almost acrylic looking, but in an edible version, um, cutouts for your cake. And then I'm also going to be talking all about the new cello sheets. This is the first live that I'm doing, talking all about the new cello sheets from Icing Images um, that we are carrying as well, and how I use them, and what the differences between those and other edible sheets are. So we're going to go over everything today and I'm super duper excited. Hey Patricia! Awesome! So yeah, any questions that you guys have, if you have started playing with the cello sheets, if you've gotten them already, let me know. Um, I'm going to go over all of the tips and tricks and um, I'm super excited to show you guys how they work because they're really cool. Let's see, Norma just got her cello sheets. Awesome! Have you played with them yet or are you thinking about ideas? Alright, hey Sharon! Hi Jackie, how are you? Hey Heather, great to see you guys. Just making sure everything is good here. Alright, hey Jennifer. Hi Rebecca. Alright, fantastic. Looks like everybody is jumping on, so we will go ahead and get started. Jackie got hers, they're beautiful. Oh, I'm so excited. They are just so different and I'm really, really excited for all of the things to come with them um, because I know that uh, these first projects that we're doing are just the tip of the iceberg of things you can do with it. So I can't wait to see once you guys get your hands on them what you create with them. Oh, the butterflies would be beautiful for a wedding, Norma. I love that. All right, so we will go ahead and get started here. So first off, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sydney Galpern, the owner of SeeMeCakes.com and the inventor of See Me Ice Malt. And I cannot wait to show you guys today all about the project we are making. We are going to be doing our flower power cake. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see a little bit better here. So this is our flower power cake. Uh, I also have a picture that I'm going to put up on the screen a little bit more close up so you guys can see it. But I'm going to be showing you all about how I create those really awesome cutouts. So um, cutouts in cakes are becoming more and more popular and ice malt is the perfect way to create those. Um, so I wanna show you all about how I do that today. And I'm gonna be showing you and talking about how I make my templates, how I kind of estimate and prepare for the sizes that I'm gonna need, as well as working with the brand new cello sheets. Um, cello sheets are a really, really exciting product that just came out while we were at CookieCon a couple weeks ago. Uh, they are another amazing product from Icing Images and I work a lot with Icing images as you guys know so I'm really excited to be able to show you guys this product finally after working with them and testing them and playing around with them for so long um, there's just so many things that you can do with them they're basically a completely clear edible sheet so have one right here that I can show you guys so this is the sheet um, now it is on a backing right now but as you can see it's totally clear so it's gonna give you some really really awesome effects totally different than any other kind of edible paper out there but we're gonna be looking at them compared to other other edible papers and I'm gonna give you some tricks 
tricks on starting out with them, uh, using them, and also when to use them compared to other uh, types of edible papers because all of them have different strengths. So we're going to be going over everything to do with it today. And of course, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right. Did, will you be able to apply these to cookies and other Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, the really exciting part about these is they are actually a beta product, which means that they are very new and we're still figuring out all of the awesome things that they can do. So I'm going to show you a whole bunch of things and give you even more ideas today of what I've found experimenting with them, but um, they are still so new that they're still testing them out, they're still trying them with different mediums, and uh, ICM just wants to hear your feedback. So definitely, definitely let them know as you start playing with them what you find, um, you know, tips and tricks, certain techniques that you figure out uh, is really, really exciting that we all get to kind of develop this and try this out together. So um, I um, am going to be using one of my designs. So this is one of our designs, this wildflower that I did use on the flower power cake. So basically the blank cello sheets, you can get those at icingimages.com. So they sell the ones that you can print on your edible printer into whatever designs you like. But all of the designs that I'm using are ones that I created for our website. So they are actually pre-printed. So you don't need an edible printer. All you have to do is get the sheet pre-printed in whatever design you like, and then you can use them right away. You don't need to have that printer or design anything. They're just all pre-printed into certain designs that I really like and that I paired with certain projects um, and ideas and themes. So that is what we're using today. All right, so fantastic. Just checking on the comments. All right. So yeah, we are going to go over all the difference, um, the differences between edible papers, all about the um, cello sheets and how to use them today as well in this live. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tilt you down so that you can see my work area and we'll start talking about the different sheets and how to use them. All right. So um, we are going to be creating all of our pieces with Simi Ice Melt today, of course. So the cello sheets, because they are completely transparent and crystal clear, um, are going to work perfect with ice melt. They are durable enough that you can pour liquid ice melt over them or lay them on the backs of liquid ice melts to create a backing of um, a pattern. And so we are going to be pouring the Simi Ice Melt over the paper today to get that really strong structure to it. Um, so this is going to add a lot of stir you know, sturdiness and durability to the sheets, and that way they can hold their shape, they can support some weight, and um, they can stand up on their own. So that's what we're going to be using to pour over them. Um, and I'm going to grab my sheet over here so you can see it. Cindy, Patricia would like to know, can you get pre-printed sheet, cello sheets from icing images? Um, maybe. Um, for a while she was having Sid do the pre-printed, mm -hmm. so I will double check with her. Okay, yeah, and you can always um, email them too because they're good about, um, or call them, and they're good about saying like which designs and stuff that they have. Um, but I know that I have my designs, um, but they do have their iDesigns program, which is really amazing. That has tons of them. Those for a while. Yeah, they were. So um, I can always print something from iDesigns, too, if you need a certain like pattern or anything like that. Um, we'll double check with her if she's doing them now. Yeah, I'm not sure if they are, if they went back to doing them or not. But for a while, we were the ones that were doing all the pre-printed. So. All right, um, let's see. Sabine's asking, do you still have to use the glaze spray with the cello sheets? Yes, that is a very good point. So with the cello sheets, basically what they are is a type of edible paper. So they really are a freestanding, like standalone paper. Once I peel it off the backing, it, it's its own thing. Um, it's almost like a vinyl decal sort of like texture to it. It's very, um, actually a lot thicker than it seems like it would be. And it's very flexible um, in humidity, which we will talk about too in a second. Um, but they are glycerin based, so you still want to glue glaze the fronts and backs of your pieces. That's very, very important with ice melt in general because, of course, ice melt is hydroscopic, which means it will absorb moisture from the air and it can get a little sticky or cloudy if you are in a humid area. So I always spray my pieces with that clear edible glaze spray, and that is going to be no different with the cello sheets, um, except that I have noticed since these are glycerin based, they can get a little bit stickier than if the ice melt was by itself without the sheet. They absorb the moisture a little faster, so what I would recommend with the cello sheets sheets is to make your pieces a little bit closer to the delivery or the presentation of the piece just because if you leave them out for a while and you are in a more humid area like I am here in Florida they are going to get a little bit stickier than it may um, ice melt may normally get so um, and it's just because of that glycerin and that moisture um, in the humidity okay so in humidity of course is gonna make anything sticky anything edible so uh, you do want to just make sure that you glaze it to give you the longest possible life of it staying nice and shiny and beautiful. All right. 
So uh, yeah, this is the cello sheet. It is on a backing, so when you get the cello sheets, whether they're blank or pre-printed, you do have to take them off of the backing before you pour. So that is one of the main differences with the cello sheets um, compared to the transfer sheets. Uh, is going to be a, you have to take these off the backing before you pour. Um, I have not had as good results pouring on the backing and then trying to peel the backing off after the ice mold is cool. Um, so what I like to do is I like to peel them off the backing, which I will show you as we get started um, pouring, and then I pour on another mat, um, my non-stick Teflon mat or a piece of non-stick aluminum foil. So you do have to take these off the backing first. These are not something that you can just take off the backing from the corner here. It's going to be very difficult to try and find and separate the plastic from the sheet um, just by itself. So what I, what I do and what I'll show you is I put a little cut with an X-Acto knife. So I just take my X-Acto and I will put a tiny little cut in the corner. Norma, I was about to answer your question in the last one. I'm glad you asked it here again of where you get the glaze spray. The glaze spray is from, um, you can get it usually at your local cake supply store, so check there first, but um, you can also get it on Amazon. Uh, it's just the PME Clear Edible Glaze Spray is the one that I like. All right, good. I'm glad you guys are back. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you for rejoining. We will go ahead and continue. So um, we were just leaving off about talking about the backing. So that is one of the most important parts with these sheets specifically is that you take it off the backing first. Now, um, you want to make sure that when you are taking it off the backing, you don't take the entire sheet off of the backing at once. You want to cut down smaller pieces. So whether you cut out a small section um, or you cut a specific shape out and then you peel that away from the backing rather than peeling the entire sheet before you start cutting and tracing. And that actually also makes it easier to cut out pieces, uh, I find, because as you'll see once we start stenciling in a second, it um, is just really, really easy because it's not moving around or sliding and it's a lot more durable on the backing when you're picking it up and things like that. So you don't have to worry about tearing it or uh, anything like that as you are making your different shapes. So very, very important to take it off the backing. And what I'll do is once I cut out the shape that I need, um, if I need to peel it away from the backing, I'll just make a small cut in the corner of my design on the paper, and then I will peel away the sheet from the backing, okay? All right. So anyway, as we continue, um, so that is going to be one of the main differences between the sheet, the different kinds of sheets. Um, so I have three different sheets here that I wanted to show you the finishes because that is the other difference. So there really is two main differences to the cellos compared to other sheets, and one is going to be how you pour it. So again, taking that backing off, but also it's going to be the finish and the opacity that you get. So I have three sheets here that are all the same design, but as you can see, they have different levels of opacity. So previously um, we would do any of our stained glass and our transparent designs with these sheets here. These are a semi isomalt transfer sheet. These are another sheet from Icing Images that we sell pre-printed in my designs. And basically these are a very, very thin type of edible paper that's made specifically to transfer onto the isomalt. So it's on a backing and it's so delicate that if you kind of scr scratched it a little bit, it would um, come off. You can't peel it off of the backing without the ice malt. So you can't peel these off. Um, they are so thin that they're more of like a scratch off texture. So what you do is you pour the ice malt on, you let it cool, and what happens is the ice malt absorbs into the paper, and then when it's cool, you peel the plastic backing away and it leaves the design on the piece. There's no trimming, there's no cutting, it makes it really easy. Okay, and as you can see, these are more see-through than a regular icing sheet, um, so they are very translucent, and they'll get even more translucent when you pour the ice melt on, so they become even more clear, but they're still going to be a little bit more opaque than the cello sheets because they're more of a frosted glass look. Okay, so you can see, you can kind of see through them, and again, it will get more see-through as you pour the clear ice melt on it, but it's definitely not going to be the same level as the cello sheets that are very, very crystal clear transparent. Okay, so the transfer sheets are kind of the next level of opacity. Now, we also have the icing sheets. So as you can see, the icing sheets are just completely solid. They're very thick. You can peel them off of the backing, okay? These are your traditional icing sheets. They're called premium icing sheets from Icing Images, the specific kind, which is my favorite. Um, and you can put these onto cakes. These are, you know, just the normal icing sheets that you would use with cookies and cakes and things like that. These are also durable enough to pour ice melt on, but the difference of these is gonna be that they are 100% opaque. So the designs are gonna be uh, really pop. It's gonna have a totally solid background that you cannot see through. So it's really good for bold, intense colors. 
and if you have something behind it. Yes, if you have something behind it, that's going to be where you're going to choose which sheet. So you may be kind of thinking, okay, we have these different options, but how do I know which one I want to use? So the really, one of the main things is going to be what you're using it for. So let's say you're going to make a medallion that's going to go onto your cake. Um, if your cake is just a solid white, okay, it's a nice bright or like a pearl background, not a lot is going on, it is going to work really good to have the clear sheet because it's going to give you that just really nice background okay when I see when I look at it on you know a more plain background like on the silpat mat or on a piece of white paper it pops really really well okay but let's say there's a pattern on your cake or let's say um, it's going in front of something else or another decoration so let's say let's see, you know right now we kind of have a busy pattern this goes over it you see how you don't see the pattern as much Okay, the light is going all the way through it. There's nothing really to reflect. So if you're doing this on a busy surface, okay, looking at it over my fan, you're not really going to see the patterns quite as much. So these are really great in the cellos for window cookies that you're going to pick up and look through the light or something on a more plain background or if your decorations or your table setting or your cake is going to be more of a plain um, finish. The cello sheets are beautiful but they may not pop as much on textures or on busy backgrounds. So that's where the different levels of opacity come in. If you still want it to look like a clearer window and have that sort of frosted glass look, but have a little bit of opacity to really make the colors pop, the transfer sheets are gonna work really well for you because they are gonna be a little bit clear so you can see light through them, you can see that they look more like a window, so, but they have enough opacity and white background to them that they're gonna stand out better. You see how they're gonna stand out better on this busy background compared to the cello sheets, right? Now, if you have something on a really, really busy background or you really want something to look like a realistic label or, you know, you're making a clock face or something that just doesn't need to look transparent, it doesn't need to look like a window, that's where the icing sheets are going to come in. So the icing sheets completely just reflect all the light. They don't allow light to pass through them like the other two sheets do. So you can see that the designs look a lot more bold and crisp by themselves without having to rely on a plain background to really bolden the colors, if that makes sense. Okay. So that's going to be where you choose which of the sheets to do. Now I have lots of other um, tutorials on my Instagram and my YouTube of how to use the icing sheets and the transfer sheets. So today we are going to be focusing on the cello sheets because they are brand new and this is the first live tutorial that I am doing with them. So we're going to put these guys off to the side, but we will come back to them later because I want to show you um, the different panels in the different papers to just see the finished product and the differences. All right, so I heard back from Debbie. Okay. They said that we are doing the printed sheets. Okay, perfect. They're not doing them. Okay, right so yeah, now. if you're interested in any pre-printed sheets, just let us know. We have all the designs on our website. And that's one really exciting thing um, that I was very, very uh, adamant about when we started getting all the different sheets. Now we have three different options. Is now on our site, you can actually order any of our designs in any of the sheets. So there'll be a new drop-down menu in all of the patterns that you'll see if you go to our um, online store and you go to look at all the patterns. You can actually now pick from the drop-down menu and see which ones uh, or which sheet you want so you have the option of getting it printed on a cello sheet getting it printed on a transfer sheet or an icing sheet so that way you can really really customize it to your project but you can still use any of the designs that you want and Patricia said thanks Michelle no problem. all right so thanks to Debbie. <laughs> yeah thank you to Debbie for responding for us so um, that is going to be kind of the differences between the sheets. Now, uh, going over a couple things with the cello sheets before we get started in making our projects, just to kind of prepare. Um, like I said, you do have to peel these off of the backing before you pour them. So really make sure that you are taking it off the plastic backing before you pour, because of course you don't want the plastic backing as part of your edible piece. Um, people generally don't like it when you feed them plastic, so I want to take off the plastic backing before we pour it on the ice malt. Now, another thing with these sheets is going to be humidity. So again, these are still a beta product, so we're still kind of testing them, figuring them out in different levels of humidity, different climates. I'm here in Florida, and it's generally going to be very humid, um, even in our, it right now is kind of our drier season, or at least it was um, in the winter, and now it's warming back up and getting a little bit humid again. It's still going to be, though, a lot more humid than a lot of parts of the world. So um, I am 
when I'm using the uh, cello sheets, what will happen is they will actually, the longer you leave them out, they'll get a little bit more flexible and pliable, which is the exact same thing that happens with any of my edible sheets, like my icing sheets. They stay very, very pliable. I don't generally have to, um, you know, really rely on putting them back into a sealed container to keep them away from humidity or anything like that. Um, and that is just the nature of my climate, okay? Because it is very humid, it is sticky. I would, of course, work, um, make sure that I'm in an air-conditioned environment and it's nice and cool, but I don't use De dehumidifiers or anything like that when I'm working um, or dehydrators so that is just going to be the nature of sugar right uh, if you are in a more dry climate what you may find happening with the sheets is that they start to curl a little bit so they may kind of get a slight like taco shell sort of shape to them and it's just because they're drying and if they, of course things expand and contract with moisture so they're just drying a little bit and it causes them to curl. They're still 100% workable and when you lay them or pour the ice melt over them they flatten back out because the moisture from the ice melt and the water that's in the ice melt hydrates them again so it's kind of like rehydrating them but because of that you do want to make sure that you keep these in an airtight container at any moment that you are not working with it. Think of if you're in a really dry climate and you're working with gum paste how fast it starts to dry and if you leave a piece out it's going to start to harden and get crunchy so you immediately want to rewrap any of your excess right it's the exact same rules you just want to rewrap your excess paper while you're not using it in an airtight ziploc or a container or something like that with no air in it so that's why ziplocs and things are going to be best because you can get all the excess air out and that will help to keep them um, nice and humid so um, I noticed when we were in Reno, of course it's a lot drier out in Nevada than it is here uh, for CookieCon, any of my pieces that stayed out did slightly curl. I was still able to use them. I didn't even put mine back in bags like I'm supposed to, just because I was demoing at the booth and kind of, you know, going back and forth and talking and I would forget. So um, I would still use them and they still worked fine, but all of the, the sheets that I did use properly and put back into the bags when I wasn't using them stayed very nice and hydrated. They didn't curl or anything. So as long as you just take your piece out, cut it as you need, and then put the excess back in the bag and then when you're ready to pour you take it out again um, as soon as you get the ice melt on there it hydrates it like I said so it'll flatten back out and you won't have any problem um, now there is a sheet with these that I had posted and I can always send it to you too just send me a message if you'd like it for the tips and tricks of the cello sheet because um, there is some things you can do like misting some water around your work surface I wouldn't really mist it right on the design because you don't want to smudge the colors but you can kind of mix mist in the air around that helps to have some humidity and of course humidifiers and things can help as well so there is some things you can do if you are having a little bit of trouble with them getting slightly more brittle but again as long as you keep them in an airtight container when you're not working with them and there's no air in that container like a ziploc that you kind of smush all the air out it really really does help to keep them nice and hydrated so that they don't dry out from the air um, so that is going to be kind of the tips and tricks to working with it. Another thing is going to be making sure you know which side is the top because when you look at the front and back, they look exactly the same because cello sheets are reflective, they're shiny. So unlike the transfer sheets, where the transfers are shiny on the plastic backing side and matte on the paper side, these are shiny on both sides. So what you can do is just take a tiny bit of water or like a damp paper towel and just make a tiny little dab in the very corner on both sides. Whichever side gets sticky is going to be the paper side. Whichever side doesn't and just wipes off, of course, is the plastic. So what I do is I just kind of go under the sink and kind of damp my finger or a paintbrush and just make a little dab on it. If it gets sticky, I know that that's the front. And then when I put this in back into my bag, I make a mark on which side of the bag is the front so that I can just easily know which side is which when I pull out the excess paper to work with it again. Um, so yeah. That is kind of the beginning tips and tricks of what makes cello sheets different, but really, really it is worth it. Those little quirks that it has is so, so worth it because there is nothing that's going to look like this. Of course, you can hand paint on ice melt and you can get really pretty designs, but this is so fast, it's so quick, it doesn't require any um, you know, hand painting or stenciling or drawing or anything like that, uh, and you get these beautiful intricate designs for no time, uh, and as well as it being consistent because this is always going to be the same, it's always going to be easy to replicate so you know you're going to get a consistent finish with all the products that you're making. So I'm really really enjoying working with cello sheets and to that end we are going to start making our pieces now. So I just kind of went over all of the different things um, to prep and to get started. I'm going to move my cello sheet. Um, actually let's cut our pieces off first before we move it out of the way. So um, for the cake itself I'm going to pop back up the picture of the cake so that you can see it a little bit more up close. Okay, this is our flower power cakes. You can see I did those cutouts in the top left corner as well as the bottom right corner of the top and bottom tier. And then I did a really big statement 
um, sort of divider between them because I wanted to really show off how transparent that paper is. So um, with that, I made some stencils or some templates to create the different shapes. So I'm going to show you my pieces here. All right. So I have my three here, and basically what I did is I just took my cake and I figured out how big I wanted those cutouts to be, so I used a blank piece of paper, okay, and then I figured out how big I want the cutouts to be by just making a range of different triangles and measuring on the cake and seeing kind of how big I want to do. But just for instance, you know, go up to your cake, depending on how tall you made it, uh, measure up to it. Let's say if I wanted it to be four inches tall here, and then I can go four inches over here. Okay, you may want to go a little bit taller on one side, and that's totally fine. It's kind of up to you in what shape you're going for because this can really be customized to whatever you think looks best. I just created that piece here and then cut it out, okay? So that is going to be what we'll use our stencil to carve our cake as well as to cut our, um, our paper, okay, of course, so they match. All right, then what I would do, I'm gonna tilt my camera up a little bit here so you can see. This piece I just made detachable so that you guys can see. I'm just going to hold this up here and you have you know, your stencil to cut out of your cake uh, for both sides. So both of the pieces of this little guy here are the same. That's gonna vary for every cake. Yes, it will definitely vary for every cake depending on what look you want um, and how tall it is and what's gonna look best for your cake. So this one I just did. Um, the actual stencil that I did here on measure, so you can see. I use the right angle of the paper as kind of the right angle of the cake, because the cake, when you do a square, is going to be a right angle at the bottom edge. So I just use that bottom right angle. And then I did, for this one, the bottom line, I did about four inches. And then the, go, the vertical line, I did about five and a quarter inches tall, okay, if you wanted to go exactly how I did. Then for the top piece, I did, this is my right angle of the corner of the paper. So I went at about a little more than two and a half inches and then a little more than two and a half inches. So that one I did slightly more perfect. Okay, so those are gonna be my two pieces there that I will use for this specific cake. And then of course I just made an even block that was the same width as my top tier, um, which is gonna be a four inch top tier. So that's what I made for the four sides of that kind of separator. So if you have a softer cake, would, they, would you make this maybe a dummy yes. Um, tier? Yes, yes, I definitely would. It depends how big you make the cutout and if the cutout's on the top versus the bottom, but you definitely wanna use either a more dense cake, a much more dense cake, or you want to use a dummy cake just for that tier. So if you're gonna just do this on the top tier, you could just do a dummy cake for that and have the whole rest of the cake real. Now, if you are gonna do that separator, um, I'll pop that back up. If you're gonna do that separator, make sure that the tier above it is not too heavy. So that's why I went with the smaller tier above it. But this is, of course, a dummy cake. So you do wanna make sure that either that top tier is a dummy, so it's not gonna have too much um, weight put on it, or you use something inside. So I would use almost like a real acrylic stand in the middle of that clear separator tier. So I would actually put something in the very middle of it um, to hold it up to support it, like a clear rod or something like that, um, that you know coordinates with like a board that's underneath it so that it would have something to kind of support and just make sure that it is all going to distribute the weight properly. So you just don't want anything too heavy pressing down on it and that way uh, it's gonna stay nice and strong and of course be very stable. Okay, so now applying that stencil to our actual sheets. Okay, so I've kept this sheet face up the whole time so I know that that is the top of my sheet. That's where I wanna cut. These are on a plastic backing so you can cut, uh, if you're worried about your countertop or your mat, you can cut of course on a plastic mat or a cutting mat, something that's gonna protect your counter. But because they are on a plastic backing, as long as you don't press too hard, I find they're fine to cut uh, wherever. But please, if you have a nice countertop that you don't wanna risk scratching with the X-Acto, you do want to make sure that you protect it. Okay, now you're gonna figure out where you want that design. So sometimes, you know, you may not have a spot that you love as much as another spot. So just kind of figure out where that design is gonna go. Okay, I am going to go in that bottom corner because that is gonna kind of protect as much paper as I can so I can reuse it, try and get as much out of each sheet as possible. Okay, 
I'm going to take my X-Acto. So I put the template underneath the, um, the sheet. Okay, it's underneath the sheet so that I can still see it as I'm cutting. And because I'm doing it in the corner here, all you have to do is one cut. So I'm just going to hold this down. You may want to put something heavy on it to just prevent it from moving around. Sid, have you removed the backing? I have not. So I'm cutting on the backing and the paper itself, but I'm cutting on the paper side. So the paper side is up right now. Okay. So I just made a nice score mark. I don't know if you can kind of see that line there. Sorry, my blue fingernail. <laughs> All right, and then after that is cut, all we have to do is go on that cut line and peel the sheet away. That's the easier way to do it? Yes, it's easier to cut it on the backing um, because it is going, rather than take the whole sheet off the backing and then cut pieces out, because it's just a lot stronger, more stable, and it's not moving around on you and you're not risking breaking the paper as you're holding it. Okay, so that's the paper itself. Okay, you can see the plastic backing has now a big triangle out of it, and that is the paper itself with no non-edible supports or anything on it, which is really, really cool. Okay, so we will make one more of those for our design, of course. Um, I have a couple pre-made, so I'm only going to do one of those because I want to um, pour the other ones as well. So I'm going to make one of each type of paper so you can see the difference in it, in it finished. Okay, but you would cut out as many pieces as you needed. So when I did the top tier, um, let me switch that back, I actually did the top of it as well. So the top of the very top left corner has the two sides, but it also has a third triangle on the very top, creating like a ceiling to that cutout. So um, you can do as many you know shapes and pieces that you need to complete the square cake. Or of course, if it's that middle tier, you're going to do four of them so that you can have you know one on each side. You can change up the different patterns if you want to. You could do no pattern in the back one so that the front pattern really pops. Um, you have a lot, of, a lot of different ways that you can kind of go about this. Okay. So now we're going to go into pouring it. So at this point, you could pour your ice malt first and lay the paper into it, as long as, of course, you're being careful. Um, you can also pour over top of it, which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to throw my ice malt into the microwave, or I had it preheating. I'm just going to kind of give it another 30 seconds or so. And we're going to grab our other mat. So you do want to pour on a mat that ice malt's going to release from. You can pour on a silicone mat, but as you guys know, I don't really like pouring um, big pieces on a silicone mat because it can bubble up from the heat. And you are also are going to take that texture because the sil or the cello sheet melts a little bit when it touches the heat of the ice mold and it's going to take whatever shape it's laying on. So I want something that doesn't have a ton of texture. So I'm going to be using my nonstick Teflon mat. These are reusable mats that we have on our website. But another thing you can do is use non-stick aluminum foil. This has to be specifically non-stick because I wouldn't want to mix the grease with the paper of greasing regular foil. So it has to be the regular non-stick. And just make sure you don't get too many creases and things in it as you are laying it out. Patricia, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, once you peel off the top and handle it with your hands, do your fingerprints show? No, I've never had fingerprint issues unless your fingers are damp or wet. You know, then it can get a little bit sticky. But as long as your fingers are dry, I don't have any problem with it. Give it another 30 seconds or so in the microwave while we get this ready. So we're going to lay down our paper. We're going to start with a piece kind of over here. And we are going to use our flex forms. So see me, um, flex forms are just a flexible uh, form, <laughs> essentially, that you can make any shape that you want. So we're going to use, uh, with this kit, if you got the accessory kit for this project, um, you do have some different shapes. You have two uh, of our flex caps, which are like end caps that are about six inch. And then those are gonna be used for the two smaller sides if you go with this sizing that I did. And then we also have the longer 20 inch mini flex form. We have these going all the way up to 60 inches long. So for much bigger pieces and windows, you can play around with that. And then I'm just going to have them so kind of like when you do a square you have one lined up and then the excess goes past it okay so I have this lined up with this edge excess goes past this one the excess goes past down here and then this one the excess goes past up here so for the square I do the same thing but I use four of these okay. Did you use the end caps? yeah I used the end caps and the tw the mini 20 inch okay so I'm just lining it up with the edge of my paper design then I kind of wiggle it to make sure it's in place. 
Uh, Norma would like to know, can you use the Flex Farms for the butterfly shape? Yeah, you definitely can. You can also use a very lightly greased metal cutter, so a metal um, cookie cutter. You just take some uh, cooking spray on a paper towel so that it's a very thin coat, again, so it doesn't affect the paper, and just kind of wipe it along the edge, the inside edge of the cookie cutter, and you can set that down on it as well. Or you can do it freehand. Or you can do it freehand, yeah. You can put the stencil, like I could leave a stencil underneath the paper and then pour on top of it and kind of figure out what shape I want. Uh, but you may want to put the stencil under something that, uh, like I wouldn't want to pour right on the stencil because it'll bond to the paper. So you want to get some sort of transparent mat to pour on, like a transparent silicone mat, um, which would be fine for smaller pieces. Again, I just don't like to use the silicone for bigger pieces. Okay, so we're going to pour right onto there. I brought my ice melt to a boil in the microwave, so you can see it's still bubbling a little bit, but that boil is very important because you want to make sure that all the air is going to rise to the top and pop um, so that you don't have any air bubbles in your ice melt. You always want to make sure that you let it settle, though, until it's done boiling and bubbling so that you don't pour bubbles in your piece, but also you don't want to over melt these sheets. So I'm going to set it off to the side for just a minute or two until all the bubbles seem to be settling and going away. Okay. While that is settling, I want to show you on the other sheets how I would do this exact same thing. So basically, I can take my stencil, and I'm going to actually take this off the backing first. So with the icing sheets, you take it off of the plastic backing before you start. And you can use scissors for this, or you can use your um, X-Acto knife, whatever is easier for you. I'm going to use scissors this time. You, of course, can use a food pen, but nobody's going to eat this, so I'm just going to use my and here to make a light little mark. Okay, cut that out. And you can use regular scissors on the cello sheets as well. Or one really cool thing is they work in the electronic cutters. So if you've one of the electronic cutters, like a Cricut or a Silhouette, you can use it in that. There's certain pressure settings that Icing Images has all the details of on um, their, you know, with their website and everything, uh, so that you can cut through just the paper and not the backing. That way it is going to create like a sticker where you have just the sticker part cut out. Okay, and then the transfer we're going to do a little bit different. So I'm going to wait to do that one, but we will set this one up. Right now, all right. So let's see if we can kind of use some of these to our advantage. So I'm going to use the other part of this flex form here. And then... Take this guy, let's do a shorter one here. Just kind of figuring out which ones to use for what. Kind of takes a couple trial and error. Like that. And that one's going to go there. All right. So with the icing sheets, you do it the exact same way. You take off the backing, cut it out and then we're going to pour over these. So again, we have the cello and we have the regular icing sheets right now. Very, very big difference in the backing. Um, now, another thing is going to be if you want white in your design, you're going to need to use one of the more opaque sheets, like the transfer or the icing sheet, because of course, anything white in your design that you print with the cello sheets is going to come out clear. So if you're doing like a snowman, <laughs> unless it has a tint of color to it, you're not going to see the white on, printed out on the sheet because it automatically turns to clear. That's just how the computer picks up white, is because it knows the paper is white when you print, it doesn't print anything white. Because, I mean, if you think about putting cartridges in your printer, there's no white cartridge. So anything white needs to be either a transfer or a um, icing, unless you want to go back and paint over the um, piece after you pour the ice melt on, which you definitely could do. You could take some of the um, Seamy Color Splash Base White and just paint on the back of the sheet after the ice melt's cool. All right, so I have my... Uh, ice melt ready here. It's not boiling anymore, and I just pour it right over the top. Sometimes you'll get some little air pockets or bubbles that bubble up underneath the cello sheet when you first pour, but those dissipate after a few minutes, so I'm not worrying about those. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and pour over the icing sheet as well. And of course I'm using clear because I don't want to uh, tint the color of the pattern, but if you wanted to use like a pink or a yellow and have the flowers behind it, that would probably look really nice for this design. And of course I'm being very careful because ice melt is quite hot. Um, it's about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, so you don't want to touch it. Make sure you wear your gloves. Be very careful. 
All right, so I'm going to use my little silicone tool here and just kind of push it into the points because ice melt likes to stay round. It doesn't like to go sharp. So I just kind of help it along, not worrying about if it sticks to the sides or I get rough edges because I can fix those after. All right, this guy slid a little bit, so we're going to put... Maybe our pen will be heavy enough. Sometimes they don't like to stay where you tell them to, so there we go. All right, and then we just let that cool. That's going to take about 20 minutes or so to cool down, and it will be um, able to be taken off the mat. So in a little while, I can show you that, and I will show you the different finishes. I'm going to slide this one off to the side so that I can show you the transfer sheet, because that one is a little bit different process. So I'll just make myself some room here. Move this guy over. Carol says hi. Hi, Carol Ann. All right, so that was the icing and the cello sheet. Really, not too much of a difference with those guys, but the transfer sheet, like I said, is going to take a little bit different. Okay, now with the transfer sheet, you don't actually have to have anything under it because the backing is there. So the backing is going to peel away. Um, like I said, the cello sheets don't, but the transfer sheets do. So the um, transfer sheets, you don't have to have a mat or anything under it in order to pour it. I am going to put a mat under it just so I can slide it easier personally for what I'm doing right now because I want to be able to slide it if needed, if it gets in my way. So I'm just going to put the mat under it purely just to be able to move, like I said. All right, so now instead of put, um, cutting out the sheets, because these are a little more delicate and the edges can fray slightly, um, so I don't want to actually cut it before I pour. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our template, put it on top of the paper, or you can put it underneath, but I like to be able to remove it, so I'm just going to put it on top for now. And we're going to just trace the outline with the flex forms. All right, so this guy is going to go... Sorry, she's late. No problem. Hi, Debbie. Icing images, Debbie. Yay! Yeah, so she can answer any icing images questions and printing questions and things as well. Because like I said, you can get the blank sheets right from icing images and print anything you want on your regular edible printer, which is really cool with these. All right, and then we're going to take our last one here. All right, so you see how I just used my template to create a shape here, and then I will pour the ice melt right in it. My ice melt does need uh, another 20 seconds or so in the microwave. Remember, you can just reheat it as much as you need to over and over. This excess piece of cello sheet that I have, of course, I will put back into my sealed container, get all the air out of it into my bag, and then I can use that again. So you can save them and use the excess another time. Of course, you want to get all of the little bits of use that you can out of that. So try and kind of cut designs that are going to be as close together as possible. Okay, let those bubbles settle a second. So Tracy said, can a can of glaze dry out or harden or go bad or clog? the end she's trying to decide it should she buy the larger or the smaller bottle um, with the glaze it depends how often you use it but sometimes the tip can get clogged what I do if I find that the tip of it is clogged is gonna be use an exacto to kind of peel away because there's usually like a little disc of dried glaze so I just peel that away and then I'll use a q-tip with some alcohol on it and just kind of wash the the nozzle of the spray but I do definitely get the smaller bottles for that reason but I mean it depends how often you use it I use it so often that it usually doesn't have time to um you know get like lose any of its stamina or anything like that or any of its propellant but it depends how often you're using it so if you're not using it as much it's so good for chocolate yes right? uh, yeah. it takes your fingerprints out um, anything you want to make shiny. shiny yeah it works on fondant and gum paste and cookies too to seal them um, so even like regular cookies like I'll put a layer of the glaze over them if they're gonna be dis for display and it keeps them from getting soft or anything like that too quickly so we have our ice melt here. I was just letting it settle for a second um, for those bubbles to go away. And now we're pouring matte side up, because remember the matte side is the paper side. All right. And the same thing, just pouring over it. And it will start to go a little more transparent as the ice melt absorbs into the surface. So you may notice it turning slightly brown or like tan compared to the other paper now. That's actually the gold mat that's underneath it, okay? Because it is becoming more translucent as the material of the ice malt absorbs in. And then we'll do the same thing where we're just spreading into the crevices. 
And I purposely kind of did this off to the side rather than in the center so I don't have to move it and risk um, you know, changing the shape of it as I slide it out of the way because I have a couple things to show you as they're cooling. Okay, last thing is we'll just pop any surface bubbles with our torch just like we did with the others. I see a little bubble on my other icing sheet piece. I'm just going to zap that. Uh, ice molt's very thick, so sometimes the bubbles take a second to rise to the surface. So um, if you see a bubble after a couple minutes of it cooling, you can zap that because sometimes they lag a little bit. All right, so yeah, those are going to take like 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes for them to cool. I am going to put my little fan on them, just kind of blowing cool air past them to help them cool off as we are talking. Okay, and then I'll be able to show you those. All right, so in the meantime, I have a couple of pre-made pieces that I was going to show you how to put together once you are ready to assemble them to your cake. So let me grab those. All right, so I keep them in a sealed container because I have not glazed these. So because it is a little more humid here, just to keep them from getting sticky in the air, if I haven't glazed anything yet, I keep them in a sealed container. But these are our two cello sheet pieces. So I poured these on cello sheets um, about half hour before we started. And look how absolutely beautiful that is. It's crystal clear, okay, so it doesn't have really any opacity to it, which just makes it perfect to look like painted glass. Isn't that awesome? So you can completely see designs. They're not distorted as long as there's no dome, um, like a magnifying glass or a pair of glasses, of course. You don't want any sort of distortion in it. Okay, and it just gives it that beautiful, beautiful look. So again, these are perfect for stained glass windows, window cookies, shaker cookies, and things like that that are not going to have a busy background. But remember, if this was set over something else that was busy, okay, sometimes it works, like this is a pretty sparse design, but if there's a lot more going on, you're not going to see that design quite as much as you would something that has more opacity to it. Okay, see that, how the kind of designs get less pronounced? than they do on a plain background. So just keep that in mind. It's just about the reflection of light um, and whether light is passing through something or reflecting off of it. This and the transfer sheets, the light is passing through it at different levels. That's why these do pop a little bit more on the slightly white background compared to these. But the icing sheets are completely solid. No light passes through them. It all bounces off, and that's what makes it really sharp. All right, so we have our two pieces here. These are the same um, shape about. Now, when I am pouring these, occasionally, if you're using something more solid like a dummy cake, you may want to pour these slightly smaller than you think you need. You can heat up the edges and cut them down a little bit if you need to, um, but it's going to be easier to sometimes pour them slightly smaller than you think you need because you want them to fit into the cake. But if you're using a real cake that's soft and pliable, you can kind of shove it into the cake a little bit and recess it in slightly if it doesn't fit perfectly. All right, so they're gonna go back to back, okay? So they're gonna go like that, and then when we stand them up, we're gonna put them together like this, so that one is gonna be in the front of the cake and one's gonna be on the side of the cake. You can torch this, but I don't wanna accidentally torch the paper, so I'm gonna choose to dip these on the edges instead. So I'm gonna reheat that little bit of ice mold I had left in my bowl. Now, it depends how thick you pour these, how heavy they're going to be. So again, kind of plan out if you're going to use real cake or not. This one, because it's on the bottom, is actually resting on the table or the board, not the cake, unless there was a cake under it. So um, it's definitely going to be a little bit um, more stable that way. But one of these weighs, for the size I did, uh, less than 2 ounces, 1.8 ounces. So it is not going to take very much product. You can get a lot of these very easily. Okay, grab my glue, all right, but we all kind of have a basic idea at least of structure and support and physics when you do tiered cakes, right? So just like a heavy cake on top of another cake, you would want to just plan accordingly, maybe put some supports underneath it um, or underneath, you know, that spot specifically before you cover it. What I did for my cake, because this cake is a dummy cake, um, I kind of had different ideas for this, so I covered it in um, royal icing uh, on top of my cake. And you could do, of course, fondant or buttercream or anything like that, but I was just experimenting with the different textures and stuff. I'll put that back up on the screen so you can see it a little bit more in detail rather than my um, not as high quality webcam. 
So um, you can see that I have that texture of that royal icing. And the royal icing is hard, so it's also adding another level of just security and stability to it. Uh, but remember, if you're using something that is not going to dry hard, like a buttercream, you do want to just kind of keep in mind that the moisture is going to be touching these. So you do want to make sure you put these on at the very last second. You also are going to glaze them front and back. Uh, sometimes I'll even put a little piece of gum paste or something uh, between the ice malt and the buttercream or modeling chocolate or even non-edible as long as you tell them of course to remove it like parchment or foil but um, so you can see like inside that top one especially that top left cut out on the top tier it's actually white inside and again I wanted to reflect the light really bright I didn't want them to be over a pink background I wanted them to be over a white background so inside each of those um, cakes uh, I covered a piece of fondant of that in that sort of triangle that I carved out and so it is white. You could of course ice it in white um, or you know a lighter color like that uh, but I did make sure that it's white on the inside and then the outside of the cake is the different color. Okay. And for this what I did was I uh, iced it in a, I actually did a different color on the cake at first but I didn't end up liking the color coordination so I actually airbrushed this on top of the royal icing with my semi color splash um, and our um, candy apple red a tiny bit mixed with a little bit of the citrus orange and made that nice peachy color and then to make sure it completely covered the color that was underneath I mixed it with the base white and you can see you cannot detect any bit of any other color that was underneath it so the base white is really amazing for that because it just completely covers up anything um, that you want to change so um, I just made sure that there is white and in that bottom section as well on the bottom right here there's white up inside there too to make sure that it reflected a nice bright white uh, light throughout the panels. All right so now we're going to put these guys together. So what we're going to do is we are going to dip and stick those together. Okay now one thing that I do like to do I don't know if you can tell on camera but the edges sometimes from touching the silicone get a slight bubbliness to them. And that is just because silicone breathes, so sometimes you get little bubbles. But with panels like this that I really want to make sure they're glassy, I am going to torch. Usually I'd set this down and torch, but I want to hold it up so I can show you exactly where I'm torching. Okay, and it's on the edges because it makes it brighter and it makes the light reflect through. And it's a little detail that maybe nobody would notice, but once you do it, it really makes a big difference in letting the light through the panels because the light's not only entering through the front and the backs of the panels, it's entering through the sides as well. So you don't want any opacity of those little bubbles or that texture kind of, um, you know, distracting from it or buffering the light of how much it can absorb. So I do like to just torch the edges on those to make sure that they're nice and bright. All right, so I did the other one already, but I just wanted to show you that. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our cake dummy. So I actually have an extra cake dummy. This could be anything. It doesn't have to be a dummy. It, does, it can be any size because we're just using the right angle. So you could use a box or something like that. But I have a lot of cake dummies lying around, so I'm going to use this. And that is going to be our right angle to figure out what angle to set these at. Because sometimes your eye is not as reliable as you may think it is. Um, at least mine isn't. So I like to make sure I have a guide. So once we uh, glue these together, we're going to be able to put them right up against that dummy together of course and that's going to give us the perfect right angle. Make sure you do not torch anywhere near the styrofoam because styrofoam is flammable and it will melt. So uh, have that off to the side but within reach as you get started. Alright and I'm just going to pour because I can't dip these in and spreading it could give me kind of a messy edge. So I'm just going to pour a little line of this off to the side to dip into that's about the same length as my pieces. Okay, I'm going to dip. Now you may want one in front of the other. You may want the corners meeting up perfectly. You'll have to see with your design. But I'm actually putting one of these behind the other. So it's not meeting up so that you have a divot. It's actually going behind this front one. Does that make sense? So instead of the corners meeting up exactly and having that divot in the middle, I actually put one in front of the other rather than the corners touching. So it's in front. Okay, and now, of course, I'm talking and not paying attention. Really quick before it sets up, we want to just press it against that dummy. Make sure that you don't leave it there just in case any excess ice melt squished out behind it and the dummy gets stuck. But you just kind of want to form it while it's warm to that shape. It looks like I did an okay job before it started um, setting up, so that's good. And then you can kind of support it there. You can use your little fan to help cool it down, but this is already pretty much cool. 
because it was just a little bit of ice malt, so it's not very much for it to cool down. All right, and then we have our cutout, just like that. So you can set that right up to the cake after you glaze it, of course. I do like to glaze after it's put together because the glaze can sometimes keep the pieces from sticking together quite as nicely. So um, I do want to make sure that I glaze after it's put together, but before I put it onto the cake. Okay, so I'm going to tilt this up. Now, another thing I did want to show you is this piece here is the original one I made in the cake. So I made this over a month ago, and you can see I glazed it front and back, so it helped. But this one's slightly more cloudy. You can see what I was talking about, how it does get a little bit more cloudy with the glycerin base compared to a fresh one that looks a lot more clear. Okay, so not a huge difference, not maybe anything that, you know, the untrained eye would notice, so your client may not notice it as much, but just to make sure, try and make your pieces uh, as close to delivery as possible for you and your schedule of decorating. All right, and then all we're going to do is I'm going to tilt this up here so you can see that, and then you can glue this in, of course, if you want to but you'll be able to set that right into the corner of the cake and you have your cutout. So I could use ice malt if this was a fondant cake. I can use ice malt. That's how I attached the top one in the corner there. I'll actually pick this up. Uh, they shouldn't, are they still attached? There we go. Um, so you can see that it has that top panel as well as the two sides like that. So I gave it a little roof. That way it looked a little bit more finished. So I did use ice malt to glue those together um, and to the cake as well because I wanted it to be strong. And this is royal, so it did glue. Obviously buttercream would not glue on with uh, icing, so you would need to put some sort of supports in it. You can dip and stick toothpicks or popsicle sticks in liquid ice malt and stick them to the edges of your ice malt piece. But it, I wouldn't put that much weight up on a top corner of buttercream anyway, so I would definitely use a fondant cake if you want to do a top corner, but bottom corners, because they're resting down rather than being actually really uh, pulling on the cake itself, uh, is you know a little bit more stable and you can do bigger ones. That's another reason why I did a smaller one up here and a larger one down here, because the weight is being pressed down, it's not actually pulling on the side of the cake. You're going to show all three of these? Yes, yes. Okay, um, Debbie's excited to see. Awesome, yes. Those. They, uh, I believe the first two I poured are cool, and this transfer one is almost cool, so I was going to tilt that back down and show you. All right, everybody with me so far? Anybody have any questions? Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. All right, so let's go ahead and pull away these guys here. I'm going to grab this and move the transfer over to the cool air. I still have my little fan running just to rush it. I don't like to put them in the fridge or freezer, remember, because we don't want any moisture or condensation to affect it. So when these are cool, you don't want to test it with your finger, okay? Um, you just want to test it with a tool or a toothpick or something solid so that you can tell if there's going to make a dent or if it's still liquid. And then, whoop, you can see they like to just come right off. Okay, so we're taking our flex forms. These are, of course, silicone, so they're reusable. Wash them and use them again. All right, so again, this is our cello sheet, so it's completely transparent, so you get that. You can use the front or the back, which is really cool, because they are totally transparent and they look the same on both sides. So depending on which way you like the pattern or which way it fits in, you can flip them back and forth, which is cool. And then this is the icing sheet. So this is the sheet itself on the backing. Of course, the ice melt side is going to be shinier, um, and the backing doesn't have the pattern on both sides, unless you printed both sides. But with the um, plastic backing, you know, you don't want to take it off there before you run it into the printer. So that will be the front, just like that. And as you can see, no light is passing through it. It's just reflecting off of the white, opaque background. So if you're putting this on top of something busy, it's going to be definitely the most crisp and the most bright um, to give you that really, really solid finish. And now our transfer needs one more second to cool, so I want to show you one more thing, which is cleaning up the edges after they come out of the flex form. So you can see on this one, I have some like rougher edges down here. It's not really perfect, just from where I spread it into the corners. So all we're going to do, not from the paper side, because you don't want to burn the paper, you want to do it from the ice malt side up, so the same way it was sitting when it was cooling. I'm just going to lightly torch on those corners, and it will melt into itself sometimes on the edges as well, or on the edge itself to melt those. So Caroline would like to know, does it matter which side is facing out? It doesn't. And the end, as long as you glaze both sides, it really doesn't matter which way is facing out because they look the same with the cello sheets. The other ones, of course, you want the pattern to be the front. 
All right, so usually those um, corners are just going to melt and recede into themselves because ice melt just likes to smooth over. But if you still have a little bit left there, a few seconds after you torch, you can pick it up with your gloved hands and it'll be pliable. So you can actually go back with your scissors and you can either trim off excess or take your silicone tools and just kind of reshape them or your, again, gloved hands and kind of pinch them. But make sure you wait a good five to 10 seconds before you pick it up after torching because you did just blow torch it. Isn't that amazing? I love, love, love these patterns because it's just a really nice kind of light design. I didn't want anything too, too busy for this because I just wanted it to be kind of a pretty spring look. I'm very excited for spring, so um, I really wanted to do something florally and just light and pretty. And I wanted it to, to show off the window effect too because the cello sheets definitely will look clear. They will look transparent. But um, if there's a really busy pattern, they're not as window-like. They're just more like glass, like stained glass. It's not something you necessarily look through to look outside. It's something that you look through itself. So to really highlight the fact that you could see all the way through it, I wanted a design that had a lot of clear around it because the clear, you know, just kind of gave it that more see-through look um, for my specific design. All right, let's check in our, yeah, our transfer is done too, so you will be able to see that one. This one, remember, we poured on the backing where the first two we did not, so it comes off a little different. We're going to take those flex forms away, and then this is where the magic happens with these. Right, the plastic actually peels away from the ice malt. Okay, see how it got more transparent than the original paper? And then we just, when it's cool, the plastic, oh, make sure, <laughs> plastic backing peels away, and look at that. It just transferred the design from the paper onto the ice malt. So it has that sort of beautiful frosted look and it still has some transparency to it so you could put lights behind it um, you can use it for windows and it will definitely have a see-through effect but because it is slightly opaque it kind of shows up a little bit better and a little bit more detailed than if you were doing the clear sheet on a busy background so this is actually a good example my logo on my mat here you see how when i put the clear sheet over it you can see around it but you can't really see the designs over it as much because there's stuff going on with this one look how you can see the flowers a little bit more. It still does affect it because, again, the dark background and the stuff going on is seeing through it, but you can still see it a little bit more. And then if you look at the opaque, completely solid icing sheet, that just cancels it out. It completely covers it up. So you have different levels of opacity depending on the project that you are doing. So you can go with totally transparent, you can go with a little bit in between like a frosted glass, or you can go with 100% opaque. A couple questions. Yes. Osita asks, can you Zeodo to clean the edges? Yes, you absolutely can use a Zeodo to clean the edges, especially that nice like flat tool that they, they have. It's almost like a knife. You can just cut up the side of that and it works beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, and uh, Carol Ann was yep. saying, if you have the pattern side on the inside, won't the glue smear it? Um, it actually doesn't for a couple of reasons. Um, one is going to be when you pour the ice malt on, it really does cement it into place. Uh, if you had the paper itself, like if the paper was face up and you put water or something on it, it would. But the ice malt is stable enough that it really does lock it in. But also, the pattern is printed on the other side of the paper. So when I pour the ice malt on the sheet, it doesn't really matter which side of the sheet that you actually pour it on. Like you could put the sheet either way on your mat before you pour the ice malt. But if the ink side is out, it's more susceptible to smearing, if that makes sense. Because right now, the ink is trapped between the thin layer of clear paper and the ice malt. It's on the inside. But if that paper was flipped the other way and the printed side was out, then the ink would be exposed to air and you could smear it more than if it's on, you know, pressed to the ice malt, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um. So Debbie was wondering, can you use the white cello rather than the icing sheet? Yes, that is a really good point. So the cello sheets um, not only come in transparent, but you can get them in white as well. So if you wanted a white background, they're a beautiful shiny finish, whereas these are a little bit more matte. These are going to be uh, the opaque white is totally shiny. So you can use the whites and those don't let as much light through either. So you're going to have a more similar effect to the um, icing sheet, but you're going to have the texture and the ability and flex of the cello sheets, so it's kind of a goes in between. So Debbie said so it's important to torch the side that doesn't have the sheet. Yes. <laughs> to burn the design, uh, 
You ask how I know? <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely done that too, but you have to, you know, try torching on it to see how it's going to work, right? You got to know. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to make sure that you torch the and side of the ice mold. see through the white cello sheet, but the icing sheet is totally white. Oh, okay. So it would be somewhere more between the white and the transistor sheet. It would kind of be like another level between those two. I played with the white ones, but the clear ones just completely grabbed my attention because they look so awesome and clear. Um, but yeah, the white ones are a cool texture because they are, um, you know, flexible. Like those cello sheets, it's almost more like that vinyl decal texture. So yes, exactly between the two. And... Uh, Melinda, sorry she missed it. She'll have to rewatch. It will be replayed. Yes, you can watch the replay. For some reason, the first part cut off. Um, the live ended for some reason a few minutes in, so just watch the first part and then the second. But when I always put my lives on uh, my YouTube channel afterwards, so I will edit them together so that you can just watch it all in one go in my YouTube channel. It should be up within a day or so. Um, I wanted to show you, I have a couple other pictures too of some projects I've done with the cello sheet, so I just wanted to show you some more examples of that. Um, so I wanted to show you, this is one that I made at uh, Cookie Con this, a couple weeks ago in Reno. So the butterflies are actually designed from icing images. And um, we ha they printed it out for me at the booth. Um, Lori brought it over uh, so that we, I can kind of play around with it. And they actually cut them out with the electronic cutter. So what you can do is you can print out, like I was saying, but also program your electronic cutter to cut those exact shapes. So those butterflies, when I peeled them off the sheet, it's not in that pattern. They're actually freestanding butterflies. Um, so they were cut out exactly to the outline of the butterfly. And then I just arranged them into a pattern before pouring the ice melt on. And then those little bubbles just kind of happened naturally and I liked them so I left them I didn't try and melt them away I thought they added to the design um, but the butterflies themselves are so clear I'll play that again so you can see it um, they're so clear and I just really liked it so instead of using a flex form for that I laid the uh, baked cookie on top of it and poured into that so if you want to make window cookies or shaker cookies that's a really nice way to do that as well Debbie wants to know if you can get a picture of this later for her yeah definitely <laughs> I could do that Okay, and then um, another thing is going to be the windows. So I did this window on my um, sea glass cake that I made, and I had a picture of the whole one, but I guess I popped it off um, by accident before we started. But you can see that the window is made with the cello sheets, and it's totally clear. It's in a cutout cake, so you can see through the whole thing. You could put lights inside of it if you want to, but it just really, really gives that beautiful stained glass. This is another one of our, de our designs that's on seemecakes.com. So um, you can see I incorporated it into some of the other I'm going to see if I can grab the other, the full picture of the cake, if you guys haven't seen it really quick. But um, yeah, I just kind of, I did the same thing. I cut it out to the shape that I wanted, and then I used the flex forms to make a form around it, and then I poured the ice melt in the flex forms before securing it into my cake, which was kind of cool. Norma would like to know, can the clear butterfly cello sheet be cut out and laid onto the ice mold. Yes, you can do it the opposite way as well, for sure. Um, you can, instead of pouring on top, you can pour the ice mold first, and then carefully, of course, maybe with tweezers so you don't you know, get your fingers in the ice mold, you can lay your pieces on top. I actually did that in one of my newer videos. I did some little lollipops showing the different finishes, and I poured the ice mold in my shaker maker mold first, and then laid the design right into that. So um, here is the full cake so that you can see uh, the different designs that I did. So I incorporated that uh, swirling window pattern into the um, pillars that are on the top too as well to get kind of like a castle sort of look. So um, you can see I incorporated them the same way. I just cut them out and then used the um, flex forms to do it as well. I have a time lapse of that on my uh, Instagram and my Facebook too if you want to see how I put that cake together. All right, and then um, another one that we have, was there any other questions oh, right no, now? Oh, no, but Debbie said she took an icing sheet, had ice melt poured over it of a winter scene, and then created snowflakes printed and cut out on cello sheets and layering it. Oh, that's such a good idea. Oh, my gosh, I love that. Definitely have to see that. Making sure. All right, so um, another thing that we have using the cello sheets, if you want to learn more about the cello sheets, we do have uh, tomorrow is our ice melt sea turtle. Um, so I know a lot of you guys will be there on Sunday. And we're, that's the cello sheets as well inside the shell, but we're actually encasing them. We're not laying them or pouring over them. Um, it's a completely different technique using the cello sheets. So if you're signed up for that and there's still time to sign up, that is tomorrow. That's our Zoom class. So it'll be interactive. Everybody's going to make it along with it, or you can watch after. And um, we're going to have such awesome designs. I love, love, love it. But that's another one of our designs inside the shell. So the shell is ice, all ice malt and cello.
So Debbie said she didn't do it. It's just an idea. <laughs> oh, well, now you have to do it, and you have to post the pictures so we can see. <laughs> All right, and then some more CME events happening. Um, don't forget, on Monday, we have the amazing Irenia. Uh, she is from Florida Bakers Club, and she's going to be showing how to make these really, really cute isomalt bunny ears in cupcakes three ways. That's going to be another live here on the CME Cakes page, so make sure you tune in for that. Super excited about that. What time? Um, that one is going to be at 7 p.m. on Monday, so it's going to be after work, um, Eastern time, 7 p.m. EST, so make sure that you tune in for that because she always has such good tips, and she's so innovative in the ways that she's making these. It's just so, so cool. So make sure that you tune into that on Monday. And then you guys know that I love to give you a sneak peek, or actually the first look, because it's available now, at our new, um, or our next live stream project, which is going to be, da 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 our engraved moon cookie. So this next play date, so I do one of these every single month, these live streams, and the next one is going to be the moon cookie. So the moon cookie is really unique. The whole thing is a cookie. That's the cookie itself. We're not piping it or anything. We are going to be using the Zioto pen to engrave the cookie. So all that texture of those vines um, and you know all of the green texture on the cookie itself is going to be engraved. We're going to be making some isomalt um, brooches to put on top of it. We're going to be doing a lot of hand painting and um, airbrushing as well. Or you can hand paint it if you don't have an airbrush. But um, I have the cookie here that I want to show you. Uh, and we're going to be showing how to airbrush with the Simi Color Splash the base white so that you can see uh, the really opacity of it. So I have the cookie here. I want to show you guys. Oh, I thought I switched. Hang on. Here we go. All right, so here is our moon cookie. So let's see if I can get kind of up close. I know my webcam is not the best quality, but all of these designs here are actually engraved down into the cookie itself. So we're going to talk all about engraving the cookies, getting the different depths and layers, and then also airbrushing. So this is the cookie. Okay, that's the color it started with. And we are airbrushing and hand painting to get the beautiful shading and all of the colors on the brooch as well. And we're also going to do some little stars to go with it just to make a nice little spread. So that is going to be our next, uh, I'll put it this way, our next um, play date. And that one, like I said, is going to be next month on April the 9th at 2 p.m. EST. That's another Saturday. So make sure to tune in for our next one if you enjoyed hanging out with me today. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to tilt the camera back up. Does anybody have any other questions, yeah. ideas? Laura was wondering, so ice milk can be poured over printed icing sheets and the colors of the ink won't run? Uh, yes, exactly. You can pour it directly over the printed icing sheets, any of the kinds that I showed. And as long as the ink's dry, of course, you let it dry a couple minutes before you do it, um, you won't have any issues. I do try not to mess with the sheet, like, so how I was spreading the ice malt into the crevices of the mold. You don't want to touch the paper or anything like that because you don't want to tear it. Um, it's kind of like pouring water over paper, like regular paper. Uh, it, it gets saturated and it's a little bit soft for a little while. Um, with this, of course, it hardens back up. So you just don't want to touch it or scrape it during the actual pouring process. Um, but yeah, the cello sheets are actually kind of, it's, it's a very unique texture, you kind of have to feel it, but they're almost a little bit more rubbery, so I find if you do accidentally touch it a little bit, they're a little more forgiving than some of the other ones. Uh, and it depends how hot you pour the um, ice malt too, so make sure you're not pouring it bubbling hot, which we never pour really anything bubbling hot with ice malt. Um, you always let those bubbles settle and let it cool for a couple minutes first. Right. Oh yeah, you can see the cake down there. Um, one last thing too, the decorations on these guys. Uh, I have came out with a video on how to do that a couple weeks ago to make these um, tiles. Let me tilt the camera down so you can see it with better lighting here. Um, to make the marbleization tiles, I have a video on how I did that. And they're not painted, they are actually marbleized using the Simi Color Splash. Um, so I actually coated bits of gum paste and then mushed them together and cut them into slices to get a really unique sort of marble look. And that's how I got, um, I'll show the picture again. That's how I got the um, marbleization and the really fine lines uh, of the marble onto the hexagons that are decorating it. So if you want to see that, check out my Instagram or my um, Facebook page. It's also in the See Me Torch team. Make sure you are a part of the See Me Torch team if you are not already, because it's a super duper fun uh, ice malt group, no drama Facebook group. We post lots of inspiration pictures and design ideas and what we've made. 
All right. So yeah, um, just make sure that you are going to, um, you know, when you're finished with your ice melt pieces, you glaze them. Again, that's the most important part. So again, I just used that clear edible glaze spray uh, after I made my pieces to make sure on the front and back that they're going to stay nice. And if you're using that cellar sheet, just remember, do it as close as you can to the delivery date just because of that glycerin um, likes to get sticky if you are in a more humid area. But the best part, again, about these is they are a beta product, so we're still figuring out all the stuff you can do with them, trying out them out in different climates. So Icing Images really wants your feedback on how they work, what you're doing with them, how you're kind of creating with them and being innovative. So definitely let them know too and tag me in pictures too if you use the seller sheets with our designs or any of the techniques that I showed because I would love, love, love to see what you guys are making with them too because I know this is just the tip of the iceberg of things that you can do with it. Um. Debbie's asking, what's the orange texture? I'm guessing on the cake? Uh, yeah, on the cake it's royal icing, so I just did kind of a, like a palette knife scraping sort of texture over it. Just played around with it until I got the texture that I liked. And then I airbrushed the royal icing with our Color Splash colors to get that um, peachy pink color. All right. So we will be in Virginia next week for National Capital Area Cake Show? Yes, we will. Um, we will be there, I guess it's in, yeah, this weekend, right? Wait, what's today? Saturday, a week from today, a um, week from right now, or a week from this weekend, we will be in Virginia. Um, hopefully we'll see some of you guys there. I know a couple of you guys are going to be there, uh, and so that's going to be super duper fun. Um, but just make sure if you have any orders or things that you need, um, to just to keep that in mind, we're going to be gone for about... Uh, a week until the following week, so just let us know. Debbie says that's the first time we met there, 13 years ago. That's crazy, yeah, that is the first time. I can't even believe that. <laughs> so, um, the link for the See Me Torch team, um, I, you want me to just write it? Yeah, can here? you add it? I think it should let you tag it. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, if you just search See Me Torch team in the search section of Facebook, it generally will uh, pop up for you, but Mom will see if she can add. Um, do the at and tag it so that you can just click it. Um, we do lots of fun stuff. We do like giveaways and challenges and games uh, every month. We do like a special deal of the month. That is another thing for the rest of this month because they are so new um, as well as all the other sheets. For See Me Torch Team members, they're 20% off right now pre-printed. So the individual designs, you can get them 20% off. Not just the cello sheets, but also the icing and the transfers. So make sure you join the See Me Torch Team. In the pinned post is the code so that you can use and that changes every month. We do something new every month on the first uh, day of the month. Generally and um, so right now it's 20% off for the rest of this month. Make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, next month is SoFlo. Yes, next month is SoFlo. The 30th and the 1st of May, yep. April 30th, 1st of May, and the CME Retreat is yep. the 3rd and 4th, and Debbie will be there as our MC. Yes, I'm also doing a live stream on Icing Images as well next month. I believe it's on the, Hold is it on. the 5th or the 6th? The fifth um, on icing images, so make sure you tune into that. I'll be doing more with the cello sheets, making some really fun butterfly lollipops. So again, showing um, kind of when to use different sheets and the specifics to making these really pretty butterfly lollipops. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, so make sure that you tune in. Debbie also has everything icing images, and it's her Facebook group. Yes. For icing images and uh, all things. To do with all of her products. Yeah, so if you use the cello sheets um, or any of the sheets, make sure that you post your projects there too, because I know that they love to see it as well. And it's fun to get even more ideas from different, you know, different places. Oh yeah, definitely. Awesome. Oh, okay, awesome. You got the see me torch team in there, and Debbie posted a link too. Fantastic. And if you can't find it, just send me a message here or on my personal page, and I'll be happy to uh, give you guys the link. So let me know. Did this freeze? Oh, uh, mine's still going. Okay, just came back. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so, so, so much for um, joining me today. I hope that you got lots and lots of ideas on how to use the new cello sheets. Uh, remember to tune in to uh, the next live stream that we have on Monday here on the Seamy Kicks page with Irenia from Florida Bakers Club. And I do one of these lives every month, so hopefully I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and thank you for watching. Bye, guys.